What's up, what's up, what's up, people of God? What's popping, people? What's popping, what's popping, what's popping? Um, so today I am back with a new video. Um, Red Flags Pastors Edition. But this video doesn't just pertain to pastors, this doesn't just pertain to prophets, it doesn't it pertains to any individual who has influenced you in any in any way has helped you or molded you or or whom you're listening to a person that you're listening to that is having an influence on your spiritual walk um and your spiritual journey mind you on this side of town we talk about king jesus over here so i'm speaking to christians christians only love joy peace to all the rest of y'all but we talk about king jesus over here the way the truth and the life of our him there's no other way so I'm speaking to specifically for Christians um, and different church experiences that I'm going to share that I've had. Um, but yeah, just different red flags that I've seen in my personal walk. And just a little a little um, synopsis. I have been a church girl all my life. I ever since I was born, I've always been to um, been to church and I've I've always I, I'm a lover of learning. I love to learn. And also, I love to study. So, if somebody had anything that um, was I seen was that seemed to be great or a wealth of knowledge, any person that was a seemed to be a pool of knowledge, I would a hundred percent go sit at their feet and listen. Um, so yeah, I I love learning, love studying, love all of that. Um, but also, I can say something that was a flaw. Um, I was very gullible. I can say that. I was extremely gullible um, if you just seem like you had a lot of information about God. I was going to go grab it. I was going to go listen. But as you, as we know, as we read the word of God, we know that there are the Bereans in the Bible, in the New Testament, where it says that when the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul himself came to teach them something, it says that they went, they took everything that he said and they went to the word of God. Okay. They went to the word of God and they studied it to, they studied it to ensure that the person, which, which was the Apostle Paul, the one who was teaching, was telling the truth. And that was one area I can be honest and say that I did not do. Um, I was not going and back checking, fact checking everything that was coming out of the person's mouth. Now, that is my encouragement, even before I even get into the nooks and crannies of it all. Go back, go, you're every single person you're listening to, every Christian influencer that you will ever put your ear to, you need to be going and fact checking everything they say, even this video. Go back and fact check everything that is said and ensure that it aligns with what is in the word of God, okay? Because there's too many deceivers out here. There's too many. So now speaking to my story, um, I was in a place of deep desperation for the word. I just wanted to know more about God, just, just a strong desire to know more about him. And so one day I fell across this very popular, very famous, um, very viral um, prophet slash pastor slash teacher um, who was 100% gifted in speaking. He definitely had a, a speaking ability um, that honestly surpassed many other pastors I even listened to prior, prior to, um, prior to meeting him. But, you know, Another thing, don't be deceived by gifts now. A person may have a gift, but God says in the word, it says that he gives gifts freely to men. But when when it, when it says that he gives them freely, they also have the freedom to uh, use that gift and turn it on his head and use it for the devil. Prime example, Hitler. Adolf Hitler is a perfect example that comes to mind every time. This man had the gift of speaking. And guess what? He used that same tongue to influence an entire nation to become assassins to another group of people. So gifts, don't be mesmerized by gifts. Don't be mesmerized by what you see. Be mesmerized by the word of God and allow that to be your filter, filter through which you see life. Um, 
So yeah, I can say at the time I was not doing that. I was not fact checking everything that was said with the word of God. Instead, I was just uh, going with his flow. And one thing that I also did learn that was so, it was so extremely deceptive um, was that he would get your trust. These Some of these leaders, a lot of these leaders, they'll try to get your trust initially little by little. Well, they'll insinuate um, in a certain way that, you know, I, you know, that they're the only ones with this specific revelation or they're the only ones who have the true revelation of the word of God or that um, there is no other uh, person or outside of their their sphere of influence that that has the true, accurate meaning and deeper revelation of what the word of God is. If your pastor is saying these things or if any of these things are ringing a bell to you, run to the hills from whence come with your help. Run to the hills. Get up on out of there. Immediately. Okay? Because one, let's speak the truth here. What does the Bible say? Let's go to what the Bible says. The Bible says that once you receive the Lord God, Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, he will give you and you receive the Holy Spirit. It says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. I believe this is in uh, John. John 16, John 16, 13. But it says the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. So it is the Holy Ghost that walks with you, that lives in you and walks with you to guide you, to help you, to bring comfort to you and guide you into the truth of his word. All truth. No human being has the power to do that. Yes, God has given ministers, different ministers, different prophets, teachers. It also talks about this in the word of God. Different prophets, teachers, um, apostles. I can't think of the other ones right now. But yes, God has definitely given those people um, to the body of Christ in order to empower them to do the work of Jesus, the, to do the Great Commission, which is to go out and preach the gospel to many nations and make disciples of all nations. Um, but if this minister or this leader or this prophet or this pastor is insinuating is insinuating in any way, shape, or form that they're the only one with the true revelation of the word of God, run, run, okay? Run, 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 run. Um, that was something that was definitely insinuated in almost every single video. And mind you, I was extremely, I had been watching this person's video for, for a deep for some months for some months and um i was so dedicated that i even went into his private class and that is where we get into some crazy nitty gritties because a lot of these pastors they might say oh i believe in the lord jesus i'm i'm telling you to go follow the lord jesus lord jesus lord jesus lord jesus and then because this pastor was saying this this pastor was saying yes my goal is to lead people into to the lord jesus lord jesus but what is that let's let's break down what does that even mean leading somebody to christ or leading somebody to jesus it is spoken about in the word it says that um if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that jesus is lord then you are saved if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that jesus is lord and i've seen in other um in other places, in other churches, there's different ways that this can be done. But in when I travel to this specific pastor, prophet slash pastor's church, um, I saw that there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was no opportunity for that. There was no, they say altar call. There was no altar call. There was no call to action or any type of, of, of opportunity given to the people. Mind you, this pastor had new people coming in his church every week. Every single week, there were new faces coming in. And I'm 100% sure that all of them were not saved. I'm 100% sure of that. I'm fully persuaded of that. And there were new people coming in every single week. And not one time was there an opportunity given for them to, to say, to confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus is Lord. In fact, instead of that, he was doing all types of prophesying sessions uh, uh uh healing or giving prophetic words about certain situations people would bring pictures of their of uh, their loved ones and say prophesy over them tell me what's going on da, da, da. so instead of putting focus on actually jesus actually focusing on jesus all the focus was turned to him to prophesy 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 and um and give a word of the Lord to, 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 to the people. 
But how many of y'all know that you can do that? You can do all the healings, all the all that can be done through familiar, all that can be done through demonic spirits as well. There are um, times in the Bible, there was one woman, I think the Apostle Paul as well, um, who was... Um, who was ministering and there was this woman saying oh these are the she was saying she was essentially telling the truth but it was by another spirit and the apostle paul knew that and he called it out and he called the demon to come out and it left her so demons know the truth too they can speak the truth but what spirit is it by what's the spirit behind the person what's the spirit behind that mouth talking 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 um and so yeah, back to the um, the church service. When I went, there was no call for anybody to give their life to Jesus. The only thing that was open was for the floor to be open for people to run up or he would go to the crowd and see, oh, who is the Lord leading me to? And he would pick a person at the crowd and tell them to come up and they would pro and prophesy, prophesy over them. Um, and so that was one of the biggest red flags I could say uh, was that there was no opportunity to, to open about, about Jesus. And then to open the floor to people giving their life to Jesus. And then also one crazy thing is that he kept saying, I even, I even watched one of his videos for fun, just for, just for kicks and giggles a few days ago. And he was saying, you know, my focus is to bring people to the Lord Jesus is to bring people to the Lord Jesus. Now let's go back. I was in his, I was in his private class. That was crazy amount of money, crazy amount of money that I, I spent to be in that class. Um, it was a prophetic teaching class just because I was so hungry for knowledge, you know, um, and I just went about it the wrong way. So I, or I didn't discern the spirit behind the person. Um, and so in the class on the first class, what did he say? He literally said, I am Jesus. He said, I am Jesus. So even be mindful, which is the blasphemy of all blasphemies. Okay. The Antichrist spirit is fully functioning in this man, fully functioning in this man and everybody, every single person that's following him. I don't care what nobody say. But I just want to and, and, for, and say this again and again. Ask God for the spirit, the gift of discerning of spirits. It is a gift given to men by the Holy Ghost so that we can decipher, sift through who is of, who's on the Lord's side and who's not. Who's the wheat and who, who's the chaff? Who's the actual sheep and who's the sheep in wolf's clothing? It is super important to know that. And because they're all, they're, they're polluting the pulpit. They're molesting the churches. They're taking people who are really hungry for the Lord and they're taking them and tugging them and tucking them away, tucking them away from actually following Jesus and bringing them, indoctrinating them into their own their own system that they got going on. This man in his private class, see people say, oh, follow the Lord Jesus, but what Jesus are they talking about? What Jesus are they talking about? You can't just believe, oh, somebody said, somebody said Jesus Christ. Oh, they said, oh, I followed the Lord Jesus. Who is Lord Jesus to them? Let them specify that because in his private class, he's saying Lord Jesus to the crowds on YouTube, just Oh, I follow the Lord Jesus. I, I lead people to the Lord Jesus. In his private class, he's saying he's Jesus. So be careful out here. If they're not speaking the word of God, if they don't point you to the word of God, run to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Run to the hills. Because it is dire out here. I'm telling y'all, if 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 y'all could just step out and see all the sea of, of false teachers, preachers, prophets, apostles, all these fake people out here, you would have the shock of your life. You would have the shock of your life. And how can we how can we decipher through who's the true, the truth, and who's not? The Bible says. Jesus said in Matthew, you shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. And how do you produce fruit? When you're in the word of God, when you're in the word of God. And I'm telling you, this experience, me being honestly even indoctrinated into that, 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 that crazy system and being so, it came from 
a, a strong desire just to know God more, just to know Jesus more. But they took that and they what they did feed me was they fed me knowledge about God. They fed me knowledge and not and not tools on how to deepen my relationship with him. It was just feeding me knowledge and revelation and and, and dark mysteries about God. Which again, run to the hills if that's all they're teaching you. Because it's the same thing. Let me give you a great analogy that I don't know, it just came. I think no, actually I believe somebody spoke this and it just really resonated really well with this. But they said, imagine you're trying to get to know somebody, right? Let's say you're imagine you're let's say you're trying to get to know some celebrity. Who can I think of? Doesn't matter. Who's your favorite mm, favorite celebrity? Anyways, I don't even know if y'all should be having those. Y'all, yeah, yeah, probably y'all should be having those. But your favorite person, right? Let's say, how did you get to know that person? You got to know them by spending time with them. You got to know them by talking with them. You got to, you spent time with them because you are around them all the time. Let's say it's your best friend. You you know them because you spent time with them. You talked to them all the time. You probably stayed up late talking to them. You probably slept over at their house a billion and one times. And because you slept over at their house, you're familiar with their family. You're familiar with their siblings. And you know what form, you know how they are. You know how they function. You've seen them when they were angry. You've seen them when they were sad. You've seen them when they were happy. You've seen them when they were, you know, maybe a little irritated. You know how they function. You know how they work because you were close to them. You were in close, close, close proximity with these people, with that person. So you can say, you can rest assured knowing, like, I, I know this person. I'm pretty familiar with that. Maybe that's your spouse. You spend time with them all the time. You know who they are. You uh, you are very close and intimate. You spend those intimate times with them. Um, let's say it's your mom or whoever you're closest with. Have that person in mind. You know them. How do you know them? You spend time with them. You talk with them. You walk with them. You live with them. You see them in different predicaments. You see them in different environments. You see how they work. You see how they function. Now, you can rest assured knowing that you know this person like the back of your hand. Now, let's say a third party comes in and they can say, I read a million and one facts about this person that you're in a relationship with. So I know them more than you. No, that's not how things work. That's not how a relationship works. It's about spending time with a person. It's not just about knowing facts about that specific individual. That will get you nowhere. You can know a million and one facts about somebody and still not know them at all. And so that's what I found myself, the predicament I found myself in with this church is that this specific prophet pastor had a lot of knowledge about God. He had boatloads of knowledge about the quote mysteries of God, but it had nothing to do with relationship. If, if anything, he tried to indoctrinate and instill in those who listen to him that I'm the only way that you can really get to know God. It's only through me that you can get to know. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can get to the Father except through him. So he was trying to be that middle man. Literally, he said he was Jesus. Like this. In his private class. And mind you, this is a popular man that hundreds of thousands, millions of people are listening to, are flying out of countries to go see this man. Flying out of countries. Even me. I flew out of my own comfort of North Carolina to go see him which praise God for deliverance and freedom okay every week people are coming flying from different states countries even to go see this man whole time he's trying to act as the middle man between you and God and that's a place that only Jesus the true living Jesus Christ the one who came died rose on the third day and is coming back again very 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 soon should take and i would like to even point out one other verse that is super important to even bring up in this this specific situation and, there, and honestly even the situation i found myself in was the verse that says um i believe in matthew might be seven i'll put it in the here or something but in matthew in matthew matthew seven or matthew ten somewhere in matthew <laughs> it says that jesus said that in the end times, there's going to be a group of people when when everything is said and done, they're going to come to him and they're going to say, we prophesied in your name. We did this in your name. We healed in your name. We delivered demons in your name. We did X, Y, and Z in your name. And, there, and Jesus is going to say, depart from me for I never knew you. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. That doesn't mean those deliverances didn't happen. They did it. They did deliver the, the sick. They did heal the sick. They did deliver people from demons. They did X, Y, and Z. But they did it apart from God. 
all in the name of Jesus, but they did it apart from God. And so that's why it's so important to not see people by their works, because that's literally what, honestly, what really hooked me really was that how, how people were getting prophesied over, how people were actually getting healed, how people actually did have testimonies. But what is the spirit behind the person? If it's not Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ, then I don't want it. And the Bible says in Matthew, you have to know them by their fruit, by their fruit. And how is the fruit produced? It's fruit produced by one being in the word of God. But it's a fruit of the spirit. It's the fruits of the spirit. And only the spirit of God can work in you to produce these things, can cultivate you to to, to produce these things. So um, honestly, even coming to a close of this, at the end of this uh, situation, when it was kind of finally revealed to me that um, this is a false person, this is get out of there, get out of there, let's go, let's run, let's run. Um, I was so butthurt, I'm being completely honest with you. I was so hurt, I was so ashamed, I felt so guilty, I felt so dirty, so used, so used by this pastor because I had spent so much money with him, with him entering to the private class, um, traveling out of my space, you know, to go see him and spending time watching his videos and things of that nature. Um, it was so much invested. I've, and those are those things are actually seeds you're sowing into the ground. That's why it's important. Watch what you're sowing into. Be very mindful. Be very careful that you're sowing into, th into the things of God and not into the things of man. So, um, I, I was so, I felt so used, so guilty, so ashamed. But, you know, and so I cried out to God. I was very frustrated. I was crying out to God. I was like, why did you allow me to go through this? Why did you let me go through this? How did you, you were with me this whole time. Like, I know you were. With, so why, why were, what, where were, where were you? Why were, why, why, why did I have to go through, why, 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 why did I have to go through this? Um, and I remember after days of crying and praying and asking God why, he finally let me know. He was, he said, you went into the lion's den and you came out unscathed. You went into the lion's den and you came out unscathed. And by the grace of God, he gave me the understanding of that, about how I literally went into the lion's den and I was literally surrounded. I was listening, putting myself in the environment, traveling to him, putting myself in the environment of lions that could have really destroyed my relationship with God, completely destroyed my spiritual walk with the Lord. But he brought me out unscathed so that I can tell my testimony of what happened in the lion's den and how to get out and how to get out the red flags that I saw the things that I heard so that when I come out I could come out with a testimony and share videos just like this um about what I learned so knowing the truth of why you go through things and not even just that because sometimes God won't even tell you like in Job God didn't even tell him the specifics of why he went through what he went through but knowing and trusting that God is good, God is good and his mercy endured forever and all things work together for the good of those that love him. And also there's a verse in Psalms where it says that um, God, he protects the poor, he protects them. And the poor, I looked at the, the Greek definition or the Hebrew definition of the word poor and it meant the gullible. God protects those who are gullible because he knows that it's not coming from a place of seeking seeking out um, false truths, but it's actually coming from a, a place of truly desiring God. And so um, trusting in that, that the, the character of God and how he, he will protect you and how he will take you out of these situations. Um, maybe even this video is like opening your eyes to see, oh, actually I did see X, Y, Z, or I did feel this, or I did peep this in, my, in that church. Run for the hills. I will say run for the hills, run for the hills, run for the hills. I used to be a track runner. So run for the hills, okay? Um, and run to God. Run to the word of God and be fully persuaded of the word of God so that once somebody comes into your life trying to bring you um, any type of doctrine, you will not be swayed, but your root, you'll be rooted, so rooted in this word that you are, you will become immovable. Um, and so that's one thing that I came out with. That is my victory testimony is that after coming out of that experience, I was so fully persuaded of the word of God. I was like, I was like, I won't trust anybody. I won't trust anybody. If they're saying anything outside of this word and I go back now, any person that I hear, I go back and I look at the word of God 
and I'm saying, okay, is this correct? It doesn't matter who the person is. Everybody should be doing this. No matter who it is. You could be, you could have been listening to them for 20, 30, 50 plus years. Look back at the word to ensure that what they're saying is aligning with the truth of the word of God. Let's be a people like the Bereans who go back to the word of God to make sure that what they're speaking is true. Because there's too many false people out here. There's too many wolves and sheep's clothing. And I'm telling you, they disguise themselves well, themselves well. Especially those with the gift of eloquent speech. Be very mindful. Be very mindful of who you're listening to. And even if after this video, go back through everybody, look through the list them out, list them out everybody who you've been listening to prim pri primarily. And now take the time out to go to the word of God to ensure what they're saying is truth. Um, honestly, and now I am, I can say that I am fully persuaded of the word of God. And if it is not according or aligning with the word of God, then you can miss me with it. As far as the East is from the West, you can keep that away from me. Okay. And the beautiful thing that came out of this beautiful testimony for me, um, was uh, a brand that the Lord, um, guided me to start and it is i am fully persuaded it is called i am fully persuaded um it is a hoodie line that i god blessed me with um god gifted me with to to give to people was um as an encouragement just to say or as an apparel for a people fully persuaded of the truth of the word of god of the truth here from Genesis to Revelations, fully persuaded of the truth, fully persuaded of all that is um, within it and stand firm that that is the word of God and that we believe that like John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Um, we are fully persuaded that Jesus came, died and rose um, for us and his blood was shed so that we could be cleansed and we are fully persuaded that we now live with the Holy Ghost in us those who are saved are full filled with the holy ghost and um walk with him fully and one beautiful thing also that that this hoodie has is it has romans 8 38 and 39 on it which speaks which is a, which is a verse that speaks to the love the extent of the love that that god has for us um and because it's one thing to to uh to be fully persuaded of someone but it's another thing to be fully persuaded that a person that the creator of the universe loves you it is one of the hardest things to try to follow somebody that you don't know loves you um and so the purest most beautiful love and so that's why i have romans 8 38 and 39 on the right arm because also i have it on the right arm because it says that in his word that in his right arm is the might and by his might he pulled me out of the lion's den by his might he pulled me out of every situation i was in and by his might he can pull you out too and he will pull you out in the name of jesus so i would love to close this out with a beautiful prayer um for for deliverance a prayer for freedom if you are one person who is now in a church where you're questioning or some of these things that were pointed out to you were highlighted um, for you or the Lord is pricking your heart concerning um, a specific pastor or somebody that you're listening to or being influenced by. Um, and he's now calling you to a place of consecration in his word, calling to you to a place of just being fully covered and fully and um, enveloped by him, enveloped by him and his word and his truth so that you are so rooted in the ground that no one absolutely no one can take you out or no person can influence you to the left or to the right um i would love to pray for anybody in any of these predicaments or if you were in the predicament where you are in that aftermath where you got out and now you're feeling ashamed you're feeling guilty you're like god i don't understand why you allow me to go through this i don't understand, i don't understand why 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 let me pray for all three groups and uh yeah i'm praying that you receive deliverance and complete separation from these demonic pastors, teachers, preachers, prophets, X, Y, and Z, and become covenanted with the word of God. So Heavenly Father, I just wanna come before you humbly, God, to say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Your word says to enter into your courts with thanksgiving, Father God, and I enter in saying, 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you are mighty to save. You are mighty to deliver. You are mighty to redeem. You are mighty to restore. You are mighty, mighty to make a way where there is no way. You are mighty to pull out, pull out, to root out, and to pull down all demonic things, to destroy and to throw down all the the tactics of the enemy, Father God, and to the build to um, build and to plant, Father God, the things that are actually of you, as it says in Jeremiah, Lord. God, I thank you, Father God, for your deliverance. I thank you for your freedom that is for your people, Father God. Your word says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed, Father God. So we grab hold of this freedom, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, that Jesus, you paid for it by your blood that was that was shed. You paid for it, Lord God. You paid for our fire healing. You paid for our deliverance. You paid for our freedom, Father God. You paid for all guilt to be washed away. You paid for all shame to be washed away. You paid for all all um unforgiveness to be washed away, Father God. Um, our unforgiving hearts, Father God, towards these ministers who misused us, who miss miss um misused us, Father God, and who were wolves in sheep's clothing, Father God. You you are the God, Lord God, who roots us out of those things, Lord God, and we thank you. We thank you for that, Lord. I pray for the people in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus who are watching this, Father God, who are currently in churches, Lord God, that are not of you, Lord God, who are under leaders, who are deceptive, who are false, who um, are conniving and scheming and honestly pawns and children of the devil, Lord God. Lord Jesus, open their eyes Open their eyes to see the things that are not of you. Open their eyes to see how they are not. As you open their eyes through the word of God, as they continue to feast on the word of God, Lord God, as they increase their amount of knowledge, Lord God, from the word of God, they will begin to see in the name of Jesus. You will open their eyes to see the deception within the churches, Lord God. You will open their eyes to see how things are not biblical, Lord God. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, Lord God, and you will give us, Lord, a forgiving heart to really remove everything that was not as according to your word in the name of Jesus. Remove all the things, Lord God. Forgive us for our idolatry, God, for idolizing these pastors, for idolizing, idolizing these prophets, for idolizing these teachers, and idolize, idolizing these influencers. In the name of Jesus, God, we come to you and we, we place you on the throne of our heart, God. We come back to the place of humbly surrendering to you, Lord God. Forgive us. Forgive us for putting others on the throne of our heart. We now surrender 100% to you. And we say, we declare that we are committed to being people fully persuaded of the word. And not just fully persuaded, Father God, but people who fully read the word of God, who really study the word of the word of the Lord. Um, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, Father God, I pray for those who are feeling guilty and shame, full of shame, Father God, for being under they're under the tutelage of somebody who was not of you, Lord God. I, I was in that place and I understand the shame that it could bring, Lord, by the God. But your word says that you do not come to bring shame and that shame is of the devil. In the name of Jesus, God, we receive forgiveness, Father God. We receive your forgiveness for, for our idol, us idolizing those people. And Lord God, we surrender our life to you. We surrender our soul to you, God. And we sever every time we divorce ourselves, disconnect ourselves completely from these false teachers, from these false preachers, from these false um, Christian influencers who have nothing to do with your agenda, Lord God, but are on their own agenda and seeking their own purposes and going after the, the demonic desires of their heart. Lord God, and we come back to you surrendering humbly and asking that you would fill us again. Fill us up with your spirit. Fill us up with your your word fills up with your truth and fills up with your light so that as we go through life, we can sift through every situation, every relationship, every voice, every single thing that we encounter on a daily basis through the word of God. We will now put on the glasses of the word of God and, and allow that the word to be the, the truth through which we see life. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and also... This is not the only color. I have this in sand tan. I have sky blue and I also have forest green and I also have deep brown. So the link to the website, if you would like a hoodie, will be in the description, um, description box below and also the description box on my YouTube page and my Instagram page and all other pages that I have. So God bless you all and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.